welcome to Save India's Coast. Last week in New Delhi, Anna Hazare fasted for four days and the government addressed his concerns. But in Kakrapali, Andhra Pradesh, fisher folk and farmers have been on a relay hunger strike for about 240 days now and there's no end in sight. Their protest is against a coal-fired thermal power plant that could spell doom for the ecology of one of the rare coastal swamps in the eastern India. Two hundred and thirty eight days and counting. Villagers of Kakrapalli have been on a relay hunger strike in protest against a thermal power plant being built in their backyard. On the 28th of February, two fishermen lost their lives as the police cracked down on their protest, even shooting smoke bombs into many homes. The police has come to the village on 25th February, broke the relay area, the relay hunger strike center, and, and they bet the people, dragged the old woman, 90 years old woman, to the jail, and they said they foisted a false case that they attempted to kill the police. Where is the need for the Kandra people to kill the police? Dhan Lakshmi lost her husband in the violence. Her young school-going daughters, their father. The East Coast Energy Private Limited, or ECEL, is setting up a 2,640 megawatt coal-based thermal power plant in Kakrapali in Andhra Pradesh on 992 hectares of land given to them by the State Industrial Investment Corporation. About 30,000 lives have been affected in the process. Fishermen who used to fish in these waters, farmers whose agricultural production has been badly affected as the natural flow of canals in the area has been diverted, and salt workers. Just three kilometers from the Bay of Bengal, the area is famed for its salt pans. Forest Department records also show that the area is a font of biodiversity. According to its Environment Impact Assessment Report, based on which it got its clearance from the Environment Ministry, East Coast Energy Limited described the project site as a barren, uninhabited and low-lying area. But government records show that this is a marshland, part of the Nopada Swamp, considered to be the only coastal swamp in East India. The EA report, if I, if I don't remember what exactly the language, but broadly it talks about a barren, uh, un uh, government owned land, uh, low lying land. We have uh, revenue records coming from uh, the British time for the last, uh, let's say, 100 years or uh, 50 to 100 years. We have records uh, for every piece of land. Uh, as per the revenue records, these lands are classified as swamp lands. Following the clash, the Environment Ministry stayed the clearance granted to ECEL and construction work on the site has come to a standstill. An inquiry committee has been set up to look into the matter, whose decision is yet to come. It's a wetland. It's a no-go area as far as industrial activity is concerned. A wetland is a wetland. It has to be preserved. India is signatory to the Ramsar International Convention on Wetland Conservation, which means that India has made commitments to the international community that it will not assign over wetland area to industry. And so villagers here are hoping that the environment minister's words will not amount to mere promises. In Kakrapali, with Manu Nair, Sarah Jacob, NDTV. Incidentally, thermal power plants are extremely polluting, but looking to augment its power supply, the Andhra government has cleared the construction of six new thermal power plants and one nuclear plant. And they're all going to be coming up on a 90-kilometer-long wetland stretch on Andhra's coastline. So, Sonia, a lot of dazzling megawatt power that could mean dark days ahead for the ecology. It's back to you in the studio, Sonia. NDTV's Cricket app, Android and iPhone. Faster scorecard, special analysis, and much more. Download free. NDTV.com slash apps.